Hi everyone and welcome to module number six. In this lesson, we'll focus on the reason-emotion dichotomy. To do that, we'll use a PowerPoint presentation. So let's start. So in this module, we focus on the reason-emotion dichotomy prevalent in Western dualist thought. Through a series of European artworks differing in time, place, and artistic style, we will understand the, works, the workings of this dichotomy and its impact on gender inequality and gender-based violence. Just like the public, private, and mind-body dichotomies that we uh, studied, we, we saw before in the module four and five, the reason emotion dichotomy is also heavily influenced by gender. Through the observation of works of art, we will understand how the reason emotion dichotomy is displayed in art and how these works produce and reproduce constructed gender differences. We will explore the role of art in normalizing and maintaining potentially harmful gender roles and stereotypes, as discussed in the first module, reinforcing them as persistent images in our cultural consciousness. This module will make visible the connection between socially constructed stereotypes embodied in the reason-emotion dichotomy and how they are endorsed in visual art. It will then explore how the reason-emotion dichotomy fuels gender inequality and gender violence in today's world. However, art practices also have the unique opportunity and ability to rethink and reimagine the gendered approach to the reason-emotion dichotomy. The module will again end with a selection of artworks, as it happened in module five, that open the debate at, and make us reflect on the uh, reason-emotion dichotomy in ways that challenge the gender roles and stereotypes associated with this dichotomy. At the end of module six, you will be able to answer the following questions. What is the reason-emotion dichotomy? How is the reason-emotion dichotomy gendered and how is it used to organize gender roles and stereotypes? How is the reason-emotion dichotomy maintained, reproduced and reimaged in art? How do gender stereotypes that relate to the reason-emotion dichotomy contribute to gender discrimination and inequality? How does the gender, the uh, sorry, the reason-emotion dichotomy contribute to the maintenance of gender-based violence and gender-based violence against women? At the end of this module, you will be able to use the reason emotion dichotomy as analytical tool to read works of art from a gender pers uh, perspective. And you will be able to understand the relationship of the reason emotion dichotomy in relation to the previously discussed dichotomies. From the very beginning of Western philosophical thought, Woman and femininity were excluded from the domain of reason. Emotions became associated with women who have been represented as closer to nature and are reputed to be less capable of overcoming the body through thought, will, and judgment. Throughout the development of Western thinking, this exclusion is styled the symbolic gendered assumptions of masculinity with a bounded, precise, clear, determinate mode of thought. Femininity was associated with the unbounded, bug, and indeterminate. Men, on the other hand, became associated with knowledge, production, wisdom, politics, bravery, development, independence, and linear growth, while women became associated with feelings, the inner world, hysteria, weakness, and circularity. This is um, a nice exercise that you can uh, start doing. Select one or more of the below images to critically engage with.
In the image gallery, you can find some more historical information and facts about each of the artworks. And you can try to answer the following questions. What is present and visible in the artwork and in what way? How are masculinity and femininity depicted, represented in the artwork? In what way does the artwork represent and produce differences between men and women? Is there a difference? And if so, then what are the differences? Does the artwork contribute to gender equality and gender inequality? And what kind of potential consequences regarding gender equality can you imagine as a result? Does the artwork normalize harmful gender stereotypes and gender inequality? And can you see connections between these representations of men and women and acts of gender-based violence as manifest in today's world? Please give examples. Think of examples of current day gender stereotypes that are harmful for the mental and physical health of individuals and map strategies that you might use in class to discuss particular kinds of gender-based violence. To do that, you can have a look at module two through these or other works of art. In this painting, for example, we have this man that is portrayed as cultured, uh, educated, and above all, is wearing clothes, is controlled. On the other side, we have these three women, wild and feral, naked. And again, in this one, the man is controlled, is focused. The um, woman is overwhelmed. And uh, her head is like a big baby head face, is emotional, is easily distracted. This one is terrific in the sense that it, it gives you a lot of information about the idea that a man has correct a woman, terrible. Because woman, this woman needs to be corrected by this man. Can you see it? And it's something that we still find in um, advertising and well, in gender-based violence against women. Again, here we have this woman that is irrational, is wild. She hasn't got a head. She's, she's like a plant. So the relationship between the reason, emotion, dichotomy, gender inequality and gender-based violence against women. The above works associate women and femininity with being overly emotional and overwhelmed as feral, uncontrollable, wild, untamed, animal-like, delusional, hysterical, infantilized, and in need of correction, as we saw just a few images ago. Men, on the other hand, are portrayed as rational beings standing above women, showing no emotion as distant, detached, smart, and disciplined. Through the reason emotion dichotomy, masculinity becomes separated from emotion. Masculinity thus installs a pressure for men to repress their emotions and therefore also leads to a consequent lack of ability to form intimate and emotional bonds. The separation of masculinity from emotions can potentially have far-reaching consequences leading to unhealthy and dangerous behavior. Psychologists have explained that many forms of aggressive 
male behavior can be linked to the dominant ideal of manhood, which doesn't allow space for men to show their emotions, and that such an ideal of manhood is hard to achieve and maintain. When women are denied access to the domain of reason, male dominance is justified as women, as women sorry, need to be controlled, educated and corrected, as we saw in that terrible painting. When the binary is blurred by, for example, women who show no emotion and men who show emotion of vulnerability, the risk falling prey to verbal, mental and physical violence. Think of how women often become singled out and or judged in the public domain, for example, in the fields of politics, sports or the workplace, when speaking their minds or otherwise asserting themselves as subjects. In such public settings, women are quickly judged for showing emotions and become considered as overly emotional, hysterical, irrational, and incapable of controlling their emotions. On the other end, when men show similar emotions, they tend to be considered assertive and passionate. Women face more scrutiny for their emotions than men. This double standard upholds the idea that women are bound to their emotional world and men to the domain of reason and knows many effects on lived experiences of both men and women. However, these gender stereotypes concerning emotion constrain women's behavior more than men's in that they have a narrower range of how much and which type of emotion they can express without penalty. The stereotype of women being emotional is often cited as the reason they are considered as unfit for high status, high pressure jobs in traditionally masculine domains, such as politics and business. The next module, it will be about the subject-object dichotomy. I hope that you enjoyed uh, the sixth module and that you will be able to, to do some exercise and to look at these artworks with another perspective, a gendered perspective that I wish that it will help you in the, in the future to read the society and uh, not only the, the artworks. Thank you. See you soon.